focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to The Power of One presented by Mitra Energy. I have with me three inspiring panelists from different walks of life who faced all obstacles and have emerged winners. Sairi Chahal, founder of Shiro's.in. We have Pankaj Bhaduria from MasterChef India and Shrikant Bola, CEO of Boland Industries. Shrikant, you know, let me start with you. You were born without sight but definitely not without a vision your dad was a farmer take me through the hurdles and struggles that you had to face while growing up so having born in rural india um, it it was difficult of course whenever i go to school people would treat me uh, different and people would not include me in their games and education and um, lesson teaching and also i i used to sit in the last bench uh, having nothing to do i think that was the most lonely period that i remember in my career so far in the 25 years of this life so she can tell me what gave you the strength what gave you the confidence that you're going to make it big i think that uh, that loneliness is what inspired me when i was in school and that is what i decided to fight against hmm. to make people happy and remove poverty from people by making them happier All right well said Shrikant uh, Sairi you know uh, you hail from a small town you studied in Muzaffarnagar till class 12 you know yes. as a young girl did you always uh, wanted to make it big did you always feel you wanted to be an entrepreneur or something like that uh, well i wasn't sure whether uh, to begin with i didn't know the term entrepreneur until i finished doing my first startup yeah. which was in 99 uh but i did grow up in a small town and in a very uh, stereotypical atmosphere where you studied science and became either a doctor or engineer yeah uh and girls would get married so you know the template was very simple it was very fixed but the consistent feeling i remember from my growing up years was feeling suffocated yeah. and wanting to run away yeah. you know and while i had like a great school and great friends but i just felt i don't belong here and i would just get out so 94 i sort of moved to delhi and sort of i just knew that i have to do something on my own i just wanted to sort of break the mold so i guess if there's one consistent pattern that i've seen now in my career is that one there's no template there's no pattern sure. i think every project that i've done has been different from the other yeah. but most of it is it's been sort of self driven yeah and you know you had a successful corporate career as well yeah. uh, how did you stumble upon entrepreneurship how did you come up with the idea of shiros right so actually i did my first startup before i went to corporate yeah. and uh, we built a really successful product in middle of dot com bust bust yeah so you know that that was very exciting you know and when you're 21 and you get a sort of leader team and you see success which is global mm. it sort of opens your eyes to the possibility of you know where anything can go i did go to the corporate world because i always i'm fascinated by how large companies become large companies you know the yeah. processes they have the systems they have you know how you know the wealth they create the numbers they clock so i did do my number there i did sort of enjoy my corporate stint but i knew it was not for me i just don't belong here you know they're just too slow and too sort of stiff yeah, for me yeah. and uh, and over the years i think the feeling of having grown up as a girl in small town india and having been a business owner i guess mm. these are two consistent thoughts that i played with all the time yeah. and she was a sort of a result of you know those two very key learnings true true you know uh, pankaj you were a teacher for 16 years yes. and then you found your calling with master chef india was it easy to leave your teaching career because and make a name in food you were in a traditional career and food was a very non traditional career mm-hmm. then you know mm-hmm. to make a living out of it so was it easy it was a difficult decision but yes uh, you know sometimes your heart tells you to do something and that's what drives you and was it that you always wanted to take a chance or you always wanted to do something in food or was it just uh, food had always been a passion in fact uh, me and my husband we'd been discussing that we'll open a uh you know some sort of a food joint yeah. and and uh, you know working upon what it was going to be like what it was to be modeled upon true and uh, then all of a sudden you see this ad on uh, television which invites all home cooks so to speak of 
Now, this was the first ever Master Chef yeah. on air in India. They hadn't even started airing Master Chef Australia, so you had no clue about what it was. Mm-hmm. But all it said was, if you are a good cook, you cook well, you must come. So you know, and uh, like everybody else's family, my family thought I was a fabulous cook, <laughs> and so my kids. And you had full support from your family. Absolutely, absolutely. Leaving a teaching career of 16 oh yes, years, oh yes. and then. Yeah. Uh, you know what happens is when you are uh, um, in a middle class family where you have two steady incomes coming True. in, the moment you decide to do away with one, it uh, brings about a dent in your lifestyle. Hmm. It doesn't take away any of your uh, regular, you know, basic necessities. Basic yeah, necessities. Yeah. But yes, it does make a dent in your lifestyle. So that that is what we were worried about. But uh, the moment I told my husband this is what is happening, he said. Do you think you'll be able to do something? <laughs> yeah. I say, hi, yeah, I'm sure I'll reach the top 12. And if I'm in the top 12, that I'm going to win for sure. Okay. He said, then go for it. What are you worried about? I'll manage everything. All right. You know, that, that is the sort of a support I had from my family. You know, Shrikant, I believe you wanted to take up uh, science after class 10, but were denied the option because of your uh, disability. Now you not only fought the system, and then you, you were also the first international blind student to get into MIT in the US. And then you came back to turn a social entrepreneur, uh, why the decision to come back and not work there itself and how did then Boland Industries uh, come up? When I settled well at MIT and was doing very well, so I really was thinking what would I want to do with my career. So back in India, I was fortunate enough to have qualified mentors who were able to support me during legal battle to take up sciences Mm -hmm. and during, uh, I mean, uh, help in education system and whatnot. So, but uh, millions of other students who does not have support like what I do have. Yes. So, I really thought, let me go back to India and create this support system for people with disabilities so that they can achieve, then they can show their talent and achieve whatever they want in their career. Hmm. And that is what inspired me to come back to India. And, and then uh, we recognized employment as ma- major uh, barrier for about 100 million people who are disabled in various ways because education system for the disabled is secluded from the mainstream education system. And this is primarily driven by non-profits and NGOs and government uh, vocational rehabilitation centers who train disabled people in life skills and not in job skills. Therefore, this big chunk of people who can exhibit enormous amount of capacity are secluded from the mainstream economy and thereby pulling down the GDP growth. So we, we thought we want to find an end solution to this big national problem with a triple bottom line approach by creating products that, um, creating products that people would love to use, yeah. using re- renewable sources and uh, the workforce that nobody wants and turn them to productive citizens of this country. And that is uh, where the vision, where, with that vision, uh, Balant Industries was born. And today you're a 100 crore rupee business uh, manufacturing eco-friendly disposable consumer packaging solutions and you know y- uh, you have employees that are 50% uh, disabled and I think all 100% of them are uneducated. So how do you train them? So we currently have about 500 people in all our uh, nine manufacturing plants and 10th one, which is a flagship uh, in three cities, uh, special economic zone, is under process. Yeah. So, um, basically, we have zero attrition rate among people with disabilities. That's commendable. Yeah. And uh, they are, and actually, they exhibit better talent and better work, uh, work output than the regular, uh, regular uh, guys. Hmm. And that's why, see, we have actually created, in other words, we have created human robots. And also we have zero accident record among disabled people in the in last four years. Wonderful, wonderful Shrikant. Sairi, you know, you help women come back to work, discover jobs that are within their skill set. Uh, take us through some of the unique programs that Shiroz does. Right. So I think what we put together at Shiro's is a whole ecosystem around women and their aspirations. So it's not just coming back to work or it's not just finding a job. 
Uh, career is a function of many things. It's a function of quality of your skills, quality of your resources, quality of your network, quality of your peer group, hmm. quality of conversations, quality of content. It all comes together. What we put together at Heroes is one, a big system of support. You yes. know, so we run a, a very unique, perhaps first in the world, a career helpline which is on an app. It's yeah. a real time career helpline talking to women about their aspirations, about what they want to do, what kind of opportunities they want, irrespective of who they are and where they live. Second is we've got this huge mentor base, people who've been there, done that, volunteering their time to talk to people about their growth needs, about, you know, yeah. starting up, about businesses, about making comebacks. Then we work with companies across the board, about 15,000 companies who are now consciously putting out more and more opportunities which are then shared with women and about 30 to 40 percent of them are remote work opportunities and this category did not exist four five years ago exactly yeah. you know so putting out a lot more remote <coughs> opportunities allows us to reach out to women who are not in Delhi Bombay Bangalore who are not going to get to corporate jobs exactly. and then the estimates say there are about 1.5 million women in India who are business owners. They do their own, you know, home-based mm-hmm. business or yeah. they are SMEs or they're SMBs or they, they run a creative business which they are not sort of quantifying in a traditional startup sense of the yeah. world. And we work with them and we put the whole system of resourcing around them. And then there's constant building of peer support, constant building of content, constant building of what are the trends in the workplace. So it, it's a one reference shop for anything to do with your growth. You know, Pankaj, you launched your Culinary Academy in 2012, which doesn't come as a surprise because teaching is what you do uh, next best. You also have your signature coffee shop, uh, Tram Tree Cafe. You know, tell us how is entrepreneurship treating you and how much of an entrepreneur are you? How much are you involved in your businesses or is just food that you're looking after? I used to teach this play called uh, Pygmalion by Bernard Shaw in the class. Yeah. And there the, the, the protagonist, Mr. Higgins, Professor Higgins says, happy is a man who can make a living out of his hobby. Mm. So I decided to do that myself. Mm. Yeah. So we set up this culinary academy. Now, and uh, then, of course, all that lovely food that we could create, we, we, we thought maybe, you know, restaurant was too big a thing for us then mm. because none of us, me and my husband, had any... Um, experience experience yeah. in a business, both of us being people from salaried backgrounds, you know. So we thought, let's take this little step, understand what business is all about. So we thought maybe we'll try this out right now. Let's see how it progresses. But the academy, I was very sure about. In fact, all that I got as prize money, hmm. I put that in building up my academy. Yeah. So that's how the academy came up, uh, uh, the cafe. Now we are ready to move on. Uh, very soon we have our own restaurant coming up. Yeah. We are multiplying to the other cities also. Very soon we have cafes coming up in uh, Delhi also. All right. Uh, you know, Shrikan, you spoke about that you have nine production plants and the tenth one is coming up in Sri City in Andhra Pradesh. I believe it's going to be 100% solar yeah. uh, solar operated. Tell, uh, take us through what what's happening at the plant and uh, what's your business model. Generally, to give you an idea, packaging industry in India is heavily fragmented and occupied by boutique and seasonal guys, maybe self-help groups and some cottage level players. So we really felt a need and then we came on a, in, a, in a very big way and consolidated the segment and tried to the, alter the dynamics of the industry and the way it worked. And that's how we began helping out these cottage players because we don't want to create competition but we wanted to create stakeholders in fact. Sure. So that's the reason rather than either buying it, buying them out or kill them out, we just wanted them to thrive mm. because that actually reduces our logistical di- uh, difficulties in the distribution system yeah. because this is a volume game and the volume product. Exactly. And for the last four years, uh, we have helped them in uh, you know, advising them how to develop new products and improvise on the existing product for the local markets. And in fact, um, and supplying have been supplying them all essential raw materials and ingredients and the technology to produce various uh, disposable and packaging products for the entire local market in India. And currently, uh, we, are, uh, we are growing at 20% a month from the last three years. Okay. Um, and currently, we are doing about 25 crores a year. Mm-hmm. And we are uh, planning to do about 100 next year. And the 2018 is when we are planning for an IPO 
a thousand crore IPO for the first time uh, in in the world. That's, that's wonderful news. Sorry, quickly take me through what new can we expect? What can we expect from Shiro's in the next six months? I think uh, the biggest item I think for on our list is to to take the Mars project big yeah. and to make sure you know the reality of virtual work becomes real. You know, I guess the big talent in India is not in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore. It's in you know our small towns. It's all over the country. Yeah. It's where our army wives are, our defence wives are. And uh, it's a personal mission to make sure that we, we grow this, we create a system of opportunities which reach every part of the country. But that also means we're creating value, long-term P&L value for yeah. organizations we work with. So that's a big mission. Second is sort of, you know, just growing, growing this ecosystem, bringing in more elements of support, you know. So whether it's peer support, whether it's mentorship, whether it is... Uh, skill-based support, whatever makes it happen and whatever becomes a tool of empowerment, whatever helps people do it themselves, you yeah. know. So that's sort of big on our list. We don't want to build a prescriptive model. We don't want to build a model that, that's sort of built on things that are diminishing in value. We want to create things that are incremental in value for every part of the system. All right, you know, Pankaj, I know uh, you're coming up with your restaurant, fine dining restaurant. Take us through the plans 2017. Uh, what can we expect? Uh, any new book, any new TV show coming up? Yeah, I, I'm going to start a shoot for my uh, new television show called Health in 100 very soon. Okay. And uh, then I have this new book. Uh, we are just finishing the photo shoots for that and it should be out uh, within uh, the next six months, I think. Then we have uh, the academy coming up in two new locations. One. And uh, the fine dine, as you said, first coming up in Lucknow, then let's see where we take it next. And the cafe is coming up in Delhi for, to begin with and uh, then some new uh, locations for sure. So, uh, as of now, 2017 is all about growing, Expansion. multiplying, yeah. expanding. All right. You know, Srikant, I believe you're eyeing global markets. Uh, when can we see Boland Industries International for it? Uh, we are already, our, prod our products are already uh, circulating yeah. in the international markets now. But uh, we are now eagerly and aggressively working towards having our uh, operations or uh, in fact distribution operations in the US, London and Dubai and Singapore. Mm. Mm. These four are our uh, near long, uh, short term markets to be in and then based on that we would want to be in the global arena uh, by 2018 and 19 and uh, get 100% uh, export market uh, for our both consumer and packaging products. So from Sri City, we are looking at 100% exports okay. and 100% uh, commercial packaging products. We are also working on diversifying or uh, improvising and diversifying our product portfolios and trying to work on biodegradable and recyclable uh, materials, especially biodegradable plastics out of starch materials. So that's the new trend and that's the new future and that's we, ha we have already we are already having first mover advantage yes. for the other people to come in and compete with us. Yeah, so all three of you have your hands full. Now, before I let you guys go, one inspiring message that you would like to give to our audience. Pankaj, let me start with you. Okay. Uh, if you've noticed uh, Shrikant here, Sari here, yeah. they have this something which I call the inner strength. Hmm. You know, without which you can, no, you, which, without which you can never do anything. True. So, uh, everybody has a little story somewhere inside. I lost my dad at 13, mom at 20, had to fend for myself after that. Mm. So, I think what other people see as uh, maybe a hardships or obstacles, maybe we see them as forces propelling us forward. Sure. And if all of us were to realize that uh, maybe these are things like uh, these are the, this is the fire that you need to go through to be a better person, to make uh, yourself a worthwhile person. I think we should try and realize what is there inside the inner strength yeah. and use that to the best of our advantages. All right. Sairi, what about you? Well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a hugely optimistic person. I yeah. generally feel that life is beautiful and we've got 
uh, you know great amount of abundance and opportunity and you know this whole capability so i just feel we should just let our own sh- light shine through and you know i mean that's that's at heart of shiro's as well you yeah. know let, let your light out you know it it will sort of just make sure the world's brighter all right well said shrikant what about you i i always uh, have one thing which is we need to work hard uh, to achieve our goals because i believe we cannot achieve by sitting in the lap of luxury in fact our uh, brains are hardwired to produce best efforts only when we have hardship but you know we can always create hardship by setting up a higher goal for all of us mm-hmm. let me tell you i face so much uh, so much of hardship in my life that is a, it has become an addiction for me <laughs> and i also think if our you know response to challenges is to say bring it on and the entire world will conspire to make our idea successful Absolutely. yeah and that's i think that's the best way to advise all right thank you panelists it was so inspiring to listen to all your stories and with that it's a wrap on this special edition goodbye and many thanks for watching Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.